Welcome to the second episode of our Match Mentor series. I'm here today with Connie Aluwatch, uh, fashion stylist. My brand is Connie Aluwatch Style and Management. My brand is, I would say, probably six years old. I studied fashion design at Evening College of Design. Um, then I moved on to New York, the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York, FIT, where I did my undergrad and my, you know, bachelor's in fashion design. So during that period, I did a one-year study abroad program at Polymuda, um, in, that's in Florence, Italy. That was basically just to um, introduce me into the whole Italian um, and European fashion culture because I'd, I, have more, I had more of an American experience in, in fashion. And then I moved back to, you know, moved back to Kenya and then I began working for the magazines. Um, you know, True Love. Um, actually, I did Cosmopolitan. It was there back in the day. I don't know if many people remember it, but it didn't survive. <laughs> was it Cosmopolitan Kenya? It was Cosmopolitan Kenya, but it didn't work because oh, no. it was like 30 pages of Kenyan content and mm -hmm. then slammed on to South African Cosmopolitan. Right. So obviously, you know, we being proud of our brands as Kenyans, yeah. it didn't sell because Kenyans fell short changed. They were like, yeah. this is you know, 25%, you know, pages of Kenyan content, then the rest is South African content. Yeah. So it didn't actually survive. It just, it, were, it was only, it only survived maybe for six months and then it oh, died. Wow. And then I moved on to True Love, um, work for, it was then East African magazine. So there was True Love, Drum, Trend, and a bunch of other magazines. Mm -hmm. So I worked for them as a group fashion editor for a few years. Um, and then in 2010, I moved on um, to Milan to do my master's in fashion styling. Um, so I did that and then I, I came back to Kenya and I formed, um, began my company, Cornelia Styling Management, where we offer styling and creative, you know, um, focused on image services for our clients. Mm -hmm. um, and here we are, what, seven years on. Okay. And then I just came back from Milan where I've been certified um, as, a, as an international tutor. Wow. So I teach there and also lecture at the University of Nairobi Fashion. Fashion. Yeah. Is that um, an undergraduate yeah. course or? Um, right course? now, it's b just basically under general design. Yeah. So here in Kenya, we're hoping we can work on the curriculum so that in the next probably four to five years, um, fashion design can be offered as an independent degree on its yeah. own. Because right now, it's under just general design. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Incredible. Um, what is the most common misconception about your work? That it's all glamour and it's all looking good and going yeah. for parties and taking nice pictures for your Instagram. Yeah. And that's great. And I know that's what I do. But behind the scenes, you don't even know the hours I put into work and how many hours I sleep. Yeah. yeah. That's the biggest misconception. It's all about glamour and there's yeah. no work to it. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that's the entrepreneurship side. Yes. That we're actually going to now delve into. Exactly. Um, talk us through that transition from okay. employment okay. to entrepreneurship. What are some of the things that people can do, young um, people who aspire to be in the creative industry? Mm -hmm. What are the tips that you have for them to, from turning an employment, mm -hmm. um, being in employment to? Mm -hmm. First of all, I always knew at, at some point of my life that I was going to be employed, but eventually I was going to phase out and begin my own brand. I just didn't know when it was going to happen, but I knew one day it was going to happen. Yeah. Um, so after I finished, you know, um, I did my master's, that was 2010, and I came back to Kenya. I was like, hmm, what next? Because I didn't want to go full time into employment. So I said, I was like, let me just start now, um, you know building my business so now so that by the time I'm older in my late 40s and all at least my business will have grown mm -hmm. you know it will be established and it will have grown and by then I can be able to you know establish different you know um, chronological management offices around the world in Africa and around the world because that's the plan of what I want to do mm -hmm. so that's when I said you know let me get into it and I can tell you half the time I used to cry because it's it's you know styling at least now but back then it was like, look, we talk about 2010, it's a very, 2010, it's a very new concept. Yeah. You know, um, most people are like, okay, you're going to be styling. What exactly do you do? How do you make a living? Mm -hmm. How sustainable is, is it? So I think Kenya, in the last five years, has come of age to the creative industry, especially fashion, mm -hmm. beauty, mm -hmm. fashion and beauty, and even photography, the whole creative. I think in the last five years, people are understanding that styling is a career, mm -hmm. and you can make money off it, and you can do it. Yeah. Just like how bloggers. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. five, ten, five, ten years ago, who knew what bloggers were? Yeah. So at least now things are changing, and you know companies are investing. And you know if they, if like for let's say you're a designer or, you know, and a company wants to design something for their, you know, their employees, they do understand that they have to pay mm -hmm. you as a designer or you as a stylist to do a shoot for them or something. Mm -hmm. So we're getting respected now mm -hmm. and valued for the input we're giving to society. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I think what I love to see about the creative industry, like yeah. if you look at fashion, for example, mm -hmm. it's not just one angle. Like yeah. you can be a stylist, yeah. you can be a stylist, you can yeah. be a fashion photographer, yes. you can be a blogger. Like there's yeah. so many. There's so many. You can be a merchandiser. You, you can, can work in retail. Yeah. I mean, the options are endless. Yeah. You just you you just have to decide what you want to do. And I always tell people personally, I can't do everything. Yeah. I can't do makeup, hair, photo, no. no. I have chosen to focus on one thing and really be good at it and yeah. that's what I'm doing. You always have to keep on perfecting your art. Mm -hmm. You have to be your biggest critic mm -hmm. and you also have to keep on perfecting your art mm -hmm. all the time, reading, researching, you know, just knowing what's going on. You can never be perfect. You always have to keep on working to be better than you were yesterday. Yeah. yeah. What are some of the practical steps that people can take if they want to move from employment to entrepreneurship. So obviously there's leaving the job, like yeah. actually maybe yeah. resigning or taking that step. But what should they do maybe to prepare for that? I think it should be a slow transition, okay. personally. Um, mm -hmm. For me, mine was, I, I think it was for me that I left employment to go do my master's. And when I came back, it was a perfect ideal time. But I, I, I think you also have to consider, you know, test the market. What do you want to do? You know, it's, it's a slow transition figure out what is my focus going to be, where my clients going to be. Mm -hmm. Will I have an office? Will I work from home? Mm -hmm. What is my target? What yeah. am I going to be selling? Yeah. Um, do I need to hire someone to help me? Mm -hmm. I mean, these are things you have to figure out way before, and I think it should be a gradual transition. Yeah. So that, you know, at least from your employment, when you're going into your own business, you already have some basic structures set in. And you know, in place, so that you're not just coming out of employment on Friday, and then on Monday you're like, okay, now <laughs> where do we go? Where <laughs> do I start? They yeah. has you have to have, I call it a path. You have to have yeah. a path. You have to know. It's just like anything in life. You have to know what you want. Yeah. You have to be very clear about what you want, and then yeah. you go for it. But it's yeah. it's it's it's. it's you have to be focused. Yeah. I say that. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. need the plan. You need a plan. Yeah. You need a plan. <laughs> <laughs> um, who are some of the industry pioneer that you look up mm -hmm. to in fashion. I know you're one of the mm -hmm. um, pioneers actually mm -hmm. of, of styling, but mm -hmm. in the fashion industry broadly in Kenya and maybe mm -hmm. in Africa, who do you look up to? Well, I'm, I mean, um, actually there was, um, she w she's called Carol Wahome. She used to have um, a shop uh, called Mukau and they used to do design um, Mukau. If, if you Google them, you'll see them. Yeah. So actually Carol, when, when I came back to Kenya um, from New York, and I was getting into the whole styling and publishing industry. So she actually was the fashion editor of True Love. Mm -hmm. So she walked me through what, you know, um, this is from Cosmo, the transition from Cosmo into True Love. So she walked me through, you know, how True Love works, what the styling is, what the brand is about, and how, what the styling works for the, you know, True Love magazine and everything. Because as you remember, Cosmo was not really, was not very Kenyan. Yeah. So more, even most of the fashion shoots are not done here, they're done in South Africa. Mm -hmm. But this is, Carol was able to just transition me into a proper Kenyan perspective of what styling is for the local market, what works, what doesn't work. So I'd say she's one of the you know, people I look up to who was able to help me transition into this, my styling career here. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about many years ago when no one knew what styling was. So yeah. I would say it's her. And then the rest um, I look up to is internationally. I look at Grace Coddington. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I look at Andrea Leon Tali. I mean, I look at, you know, Anna Winter. I yeah. look at the late Franca Sosani of Vogue Italia. I mean, yeah. Those, I look at June Ambrose, um, mm -hmm. you know, and a big American stylist. I mean, those are the people I, I look up to because, I mean, they, these are, well, I mean, I mean, who doesn't know Anna Winter in fashion? <laughs> yeah. You, I mean, if you don't know, then <laughs> Where just do stop you? the video. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and then we start again. again. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, these, these are things you, you, you really need to know. And uh, I was actually doing an Instagram live um, video this morning, and I, and I was just telling my audience that, you have to, you constantly need to be researching, and that's what I was telling people, mm -hmm. and especially as a stylist, mm -hmm. because I mean, fashion is changing so fast. Rapidly. R yeah, right, right. There's a friend of mine who works in the international, um, she works for an international fashion brand in Milan, mm -hmm. and right now they're already designing for 2019. Wow. Yeah, 2018, um, then 2019. I mean, oh. fashion, you're, you, you're always thinking ahead yeah so and, and that's where you need to be also as a stylist you need to be relevant but also be able to think ahead yeah that's it's really key those two things yeah, yeah. and then also be able to adapt your work to a local market mm -hmm. if i was a stylist in milan and i was in maybe in you know something like naivasha warrior mm -hmm. and if i'm in milan i'm doing a shoot for that people in milan will like, what's that yeah. they wouldn't relate yeah but here in kenya you would relate so again w your work has to be relevant to the market mm -hmm. it's it's really key yeah it needs yeah. to speak to the audience it needs to speak to the, your your audience where you are at that particular time yeah yeah uh -huh. 
and now you're participating in Match yeah. Mentor. I'm very uh, excited. Yes, my first time to do it, so I'm, I'm quite excited. Okay, as yeah. a mentor, what what are you looking forward to about um, the event, and what excites you about the the upcoming? Um, Generation, of, generation creative. of creative. Um, yeah. For me, it's it's to be able to just to share with them my experiences because mm -hmm. you know just like how you know Kalbo Homi shared with me you know and showed me okay the path as you know stylist this is how you know things work so now it's my turn to share with the next generation yeah. because that's that's what being a mentor is about I mean I'm I'm a teacher yes as I said and that's what teaching is you're imparting knowledge to the next generation and for me I think that's the biggest thing you can do in your life. Yeah. Show your knowledge and impart it because people have shared knowledge with me yeah. and it's now it's my turn to do it and that is how generations go on and industries develop yes. and that's how you live um, a legacy. Yeah. 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 So share your knowledge and impart wisdom. That's what it I is. I think that's uh, <laughs> the take home and yeah. where we'll leave it for now. Thank yeah. you so much. Oh, thank yeah, you. We're, it's going to be exciting. It I can't wait to see you. Can't, I can't wait for the big day. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>